up your shark, you're in the body cavity. The space is the body cavity. And it's when you open it up, it looks very big. But in life, this is just a very thin um, space between the viscera and the body wall. And there's a fluid in there. There's no air. Um, so when I do that, there's a shiny membrane lining the inner wall of the, of the body here. And what would that be? So parietal serosa. Parietal serosa, exactly. So it's a serous membrane. We can't talk today. Slippery membrane covering the inside of the body wall, parietal serosa. If I were to grab, let's say, the liver and touch the outside, there's a shiny membrane covering the outside of the liver there. What would that be? The visceral serosa. The visceral serosa. Okay, good. And then if I were to pull, the gut away from the body wall, which is actually a little bit tricky on this particular one because it's a little torn. Let's see, maybe on this one it will be a little more clear. Yeah, if I do that, ouch, pins are pokey. Um, you see this membrane that's going from the gut to the dorsal body wall, mm -hmm. okay? And that membrane would be the? Dorsal mesentery. Dorsal mesentery, yes, okay. So, that's just good basic orientation. Sorry about that. Um, basic orientation to where we are. Okay. Um, I'm just looking down my list here. Mesenteries um, mentions abdominal pores, and this is kind of an interesting thing in a shark. But if you run a probe back to the back end of the body cavity and kind of poke down and around in the region of the cloaca, with any luck without making an actual hole that doesn't exist, you will find an opening there where the body cavity opens out into the colonic and those are the abdominal pores. And that allows the sea loam to communicate with the surrounding seawater functionally. I don't know why they're doing that, um, but they do it. Um, it is considered a primitive feature of sharks. Um, most primitive fishes do it. Okay, cloaca we don't need to do because we've already done that. Um, visceral organs. So, what's this big thing here? Liver. Liver. Okay, and it has many lobes. All right, and I, I don't believe I had you actually do the lobes of the liver. No, because there, there are lobes. We don't need to learn names for all of them. Um, running from the liver to the gut is a duct that runs down to the duodenum, and we can see it here, running along, and this is a little bit tricky to show you and point at the same time, but it's this one right here, running along like that. Can you see it all from over there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alice at least can see. Um, and that would be the bile duct. So that's carrying bile from the liver down to the gut. And as I mentioned, that's actually the original place where in embryonic development, the liver out pocketed off of the gut as a little diverticulum and then expanded greatly and turned into a liver, but it's still connected by that bile duct. That's where the bile goes. Um, esophagus, okay. So if we're gonna follow the gut itself, and we're sort of cheating here because we've already opened up this shark, but there's pharynx, and then coming out of the pharynx, the gut tube starts, and that first part of the gut tube is the esophagus. And you can distinguish it because there's little papillae that line the esophagus there. Okay. And the esophagus then leads into what part of the gut? Stomach. Stomach. The stomach. So this is stomach here running along. And the stomach in a shark is usually described as J-shaped because it comes down and then it hooks around. And so this is all stomach large and expanded in this shark, hooks around here and ends right here at this little pinched in region. And that's the pyloric sphincter, okay? Um, the pylorus is this region, the last region of the stomach. I'm just gonna make sure I'm going through all these things, okay? And then we, following the stomach, we come down into this region here. Excuse me, and this is the? Intestine. Intestine, okay. And sometimes it's called the spiral intestine because there's a spiral valve that wraps around inside of it. Which can 
Yeah. You guys cut open, didn't you? Yeah. So we'll look at that in a second. Okay. Um, and uh, more just general organs, kind of dangling down here at the place where the stomach bends around. At the caudal end of the stomach is this organ, and that would be spleen. the spleen. Um, generally, in all vertebrates we look at, the spleen is going to be very dark in color because it's got a lot of red blood cells in it. Okay, So just a good thing to remember about the spleen, it's dark. Okay. And what does the spleen do anyway? Any ideas? It, it stores red blood cells, it actually destroys used up old red blood cells, and there's also a lot of white blood cells there. Uh, so it's part of the circulatory and immune systems. Okay, you can live without a spleen, but um, better to have one. <laughs> okay, but, um, but yeah, it's not necessary for life. Anyway, so that's spleen. Um, then we get to the pancreas, and let's see, this is actually, yeah, this is actually very nice for the pancreas. So the stomach is coming down here, and it has its big bend around like that. And then here comes the intestine. And sitting on the ventral side of the intestine here is this kind of tannish, or at least what looks to me kind of tannish organ right there. This is the pancreas. pancreas. And in particular, this is the ventral lobe of the pancreas. In many of the sharks, it's completely yellow because it got a lot of extra yellow from the um, injection of the hepatic portal system. Okay. But this is what it looks like when it's not yellow. There's another part of the pancreas that lies kind of in this fold between the stomach hooking around and the intestine. And we look in there dorsally, we can see the dorsal lobe of the pancreas. There, this one here. And the dorsal and ventral lobes of the pancreas are connected by a very thin strand of pancreatic tissue right here. And that's what's called the isthmus of the pancreas. Right there. Can you see that at all? Okay. And isthmus is just a narrow strip of land connecting two large land masses in general, like the isthmus of Panama. So this is the isthmus of the pancreas because it's got the two lobes and it's just a narrow strip connecting them together. <laughs> Um, ah, this is one that people always seem to miss on exams, which I always feel strange about because it seems like such a simple and easy and recognizable structure. But way down at the very back end of the abdominal cavity is this little gland here called the digitiform gland or rectal gland, and that's a salt excreting organ. Um, sharks live in the ocean, which is very salty. Um, so the ocean is salty, and the shark's blood is actually less salty than the ocean. So the shark is constantly um, getting, through osmosis, extra salt that it needs to get rid of. And this rectal gland is how it does it, or at least one of the ways that it does it. Um, and it basically just excretes salt into the gut, and then it, they poop it out. Okay. Um, following along, gonads, testis, and ovaries. Okay. I knew I had male and female shark here for a reason. So this, again, is a female shark, right? Everyone agrees? Yeah. yeah. If we look up at the front end of the body cavity, and I'll show you here, you can see this organ right there, and that would be the ovary. ovary. Okay. And ovaries are always going to look like they're full of eggs to a greater or lesser extent. The eggs can be of different sizes depending on what stage of the reproductive cycle they're in. So there could be lots of little eggs or a few really big eggs, just depending. Okay. Um, so that's the ovary. Um, well, in my list, which will be good, to keep me on uh, track. Um, mm. Tinny, yeah, I'm looking to see if this on is the other side. The other side, do you think is better? And there's, it's on, oh, you cut it over. Ah, you exposed it on this side. Good job. Okay. So the kidneys in the shark are a little bit tricky because people want to look for an actual organ, and instead all they can see is this kind of dark strip of tissue running along the dorsal body wall. I'm just kind of dissecting this away a bit so we can really see it here. Maybe we can see it. That one needs to be good. There we go. 
So the kidney runs along here as this strip alongside of the blood vessels. And we'll, we'll get into more detail with it when we do the excretory and reproductive system. So for now, you can just be happy that you've sort of found it. There it is running along like this, just next to the vertebral column and under the dorsal musculature of the back. Okay. I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, Arcanephric duct in the female, it's very hard to see. I'm going to see the chance to move over to a male, which hopefully has one. Well developed. Yes. So the arcanephric duct in the male is the duct that's going to carry the sperm. And you can see it as the squiggly thing that runs along the ventral side of the kidney here. You see that? Okay. See that right there. And again, we'll get a much better view of all this when we do the extraterrestrial reproductive systems. So the female is always difficult to see in the female? Or? Yes, okay. because in the female, it's only carrying urine and it's much less developed. In the male, it's carrying sperm and it becomes very developed in association with sperm transport. That pin was very nerve wracking. Okay, um, I did want to show you the inside of the stomach here because it's been cut open on this shark. And it's not that exciting, it's just a big sac. But can you see the rugae? I was just hoping we could see the rugae a little bit better. Um, this one's so expanded, it hardly shows the rugae. But the, there are folds on the lining of the stomach, and those are the rugae. Um, and again, this one had such a big meal in its stomach, it was pretty expanded, and you don't really see them um, very well. But you can see them a little bit here up at the cranial end of the, of the stomach. But the main thing I want to mention about that is determining where the boundary between the esophagus and the stomach is is really hard from the outside. It's just kind of one continuous tube. But if you cut it open and you're looking inside like this, that's esophagus. It's got the pili. When you get to the stomach, you're going to see the rugi. So that's a really clear distinction on the inside. And if I ever really want to, you to identify esophagus, um, I make sure you can see those papillae because that gives it away. The stomach, there's lots of places that are like way down below the esophagus. You'll definitely know it's a stomach. So, yeah. Is it uh, arcanephric duct also called the ductus deferens? Yes. Okay. Um, ductus deferens is the name for it in mammals, um, otherwise known as the vas deferens. Oh, yeah. yeah probably heard of that yeah um, so and it's the same it's homologous it's the homologous duct in fact it was a duct that has many names and when I took comparative anatomy my uh, my professor gave a lecture called the duct with seven names because there are actually seven different names for that same duct like two names for the same thing were bad um, the other thing I wanted to show you on this shark because these guys cut it open so you could see it is the spiral valve of the and we could see. Maybe cut it just a tiny bit more if you don't mind. No. no go ahead. Okay. Just cut it a little bit more so we can see it. I don't think I will injure anything important anyway. Um, so, what the spiral valve is, is it's a fold of tissue that spirals around inside the intestine and increases surface area. Why would you want to increase surface area in your intestine? For what? More absorption. more absorption. More surface area for absorption. And it also slows the passage of food down through the intestine, so there's more time for absorption as well. Okay. So, and it's a primitive feature of vertebrates. It's present in sharks, lampreys, if you recall. There was something on the list that's a spiral valve, and I said, don't worry about it, we'll see it in a shark, it went much more clearly. Um, primitive bony fishes as well have a spiral valve, and then it gets lost in more advanced bony fishes and in tetrapods. Um, but when you look in there, you can kind of open up the intestine. This is actually going to be a little hard to show people, but when you do that, I'm not sure this is going to work very well to actually show you the, maybe if I grab the forceps, we can grab some of the, the fold. But you'll see this fold of tissue right there the spiral valve right there running along inside of the spiral intestine. And it's very easy in your own animal just to make a 
cut through the, uh, the intestinal wall and see that. Okay, cool. So that's kind of the basic overview of the guts. Then there's the section of the, of the thing that was on mesenteries. And remember, in general with mesenteries, we have dorsal and ventral mesenteries. Dorsal mesentery, the main part of it, and again, it was kind of torn on that shark, so we'll look on this one. Do you mind if I pull this pin out before it stops me? Yeah. This one on the other side. Making me nervous. Where's that other one? I think I took it off. Okay, good. Um, so if we look at the stomach, the stomach is connected to the dorsal body wall by a mesentery, and that mesentery has a name. Of course, everything's got a name. And what that would be? Greater omentum. Greater omentum, or another name for it? <laughs> mesogaster, because the root gaster, gastric, means stomach. So the mesentery of the stomach. So that's the mesogaster. Um, or greater momentum. There is, um, oh, I didn't read properly. I was like, God, wait, that doesn't belong there. There is a part of it, of the dorsal mesentery, that connects the stomach to the spleen, and that's called the gastrosplenic ligament. And it doesn't look like much, but if you kind of pull the spleen away from the stomach, that little bit of mesentery there between the stomach and the spleen is the gastrosplenic ligament. Um, for what it's worth, I would be very unlikely to ask you that. It's just we got a lot more important things to worry about than gastrosplenic ligaments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, but just as, there it is. Um, the intestine, the sp um, spiral intestine, has a mesentery as well. And that mesentery, which I'll kind of flip this around to show you, connects to the dorsal body wall right there. And that is called the mesentery proper. So it's like the real mesentery, not uh, one of these other lame mesenteries. <laughs> the real one, the mesentery proper, going to the intestine. And in the shark, there's a bit of fusion that's happened between the mesogaster, or the uh, greater omentum from the stomach, and the mesentery proper from the intestine. And if you look at it in cross-section, what you'll see is there's kind of a, a Y shape where they're fused, where they connect to the body wall, and then it goes one way to the intestine and the other way to the stomach. So, and that's where the dorsal lobe of the pancreas sits, is right in that notch of the Y, or crotch of the Y. Okay. And then last but not least, there's the mesocolon. And it's a little bit strange in these, in these sharks, but the mesocolon is the mesentery associated with the rectal gland or the digitiform gland. Are you attached to having this string around your shirt? Or you can take it off. Oh, okay. I'm going to get rid of it because then I can open things up. You can tie it up again later. Um, so here is the rectal gland. And lo and behold, there is a mesentery attaching it to the dorsal body wall. So that is the, what was it called again? Mesocolon. Mesocolon, which is kind of a weird term for it, but again, this a lot of these terms come from human anatomy and the mesentery of the colon in human anatomy is the mesocolon, so this is the last part of dorsal mesentery in a shark called the mesocolon. Okay. Um, all right, so that's dorsal mesentery. Then we get to ventral mesentery. And remember, ventral mesentery goes from the gut to the ventral body wall. So if we're looking in here, here's gut, here's the ventral body wall, and we open this up and you're looking and you're like, well, sh shoot, there's no ventral mesentery there. And that's because it has truly been lost over most of the length of the gut. There is no ventral mesentery. It was there in the embryo, but it's gone. But there is a little bit of it that's left connecting the liver to the ventral body wall right there, this little bit, and that is called the falciform ligament. Falciform ligament. Okay. And in human anatomy, again, this ligament looks like a sickle, and falx means sickle, or it's like those curved slicing devices, I think they're called sickles, sides, one of those things. Um, and that's why it's called falciform. Okay. So that's that little bit between the liver and the ventral body wall is the falciform ligament. 
And then the other part of the lesser omentum that exists runs between the liver and the gut. The liver is below or bent to the gut. Remember, we're, our structure are always on their backs, so you have to remember that. So there it is running ventrally <coughs> from the gut to the liver, and that is the, the, lesser? the lesser omentum, also known as the gastrohepatoduodenal ligament. Okay. I'm <laughs> fine with lesser omentum on that one. Okay. And the reason it's got that horrible name is because it's going both to the stomach, that's the gastro part, and the duodenum, that's the duodenum part, and hepatic is referring to the liver. And we can distinguish within this single um, connection, the lesser omentum, a part that's going over to the stomach, and that would be this part here, and since it's going to the stomach, that's called the gastrohepatic ligament, and then there's a part that goes over to the duodenum, that's this part here, and since it's going to the duodenum, we call that the hepatoduodenal ligament. And that's why when you put it all together, you get the gastrohepatoduodenal ligament, which is kind of a mouthful. Okay. But again, that's the ventral mesentery. And what I'll point out is that there is something that runs through that connection here that's not colored yellow, it's kind of brownish or greenish depending, and that is the bile duct that's running from the liver down to the duodenum through the um, hepatoduodenal ligament, that part of the greater omentum. Okay. The other big thing that you'll see running along through the lesser omentum is this big yellow vessel, and that's the, um, the hepatic portal vein, which is carrying blood from the gut to the liver. Okay. And we'll get to that next time when we do the circulatory system. Okay, how am I doing? Uh, oh, subsidiary mesentery. So there are some other ones out there, and these are kind of strange ones, but the testes connect to the dorsal body wall by, and I guess I hadn't really shown you testes yet, but I will. There they are. They look like an ovary, but without round things in them. They're kind of smooth. And they're connected to the dorsal body wall by a mesentery, and that's called the mesorchium. And in the female, there's a similar mesentery going to the ovary called the mesovarium. Okay. And then in the female as well, the oviduct, which becomes <laughs> the uterus, if I can find it on this chart, there we go. Um, there's the uterus and oviduct running along and they have a mesentery that connect them to the body wall, and that is called the mesotubarium. Because it's from the tube, the oviduct. Um, cool. I'm not gonna go over, I did have you do the liver, that's good for me. Um, all the various parts of the stomach, you guys can figure that out, I think, on your own. Um, did greater and lesser curvature of the stomach bother people? That's sometimes that's a little, let me explain that, because that's, that's a little bit tricky to understand. This again comes out of human anatomy, and that's probably not as good of an animal as this. Yeah, this is probably a little easier to see it on. Um, when you look at the stomach, it was not a knife. Um, when you look at the stomach of the, of the shark, remember it's kind of J-shaped. It's curving around like that. And so the outer side of that J here, like that, is called the greater curvature of the stomach. The inner side is the lesser curvature. And that, again, is the same term that we get from human anatomy um, or mammalian anatomy in general, because the stomach also has that same bend in us. Okay. So, um, so it's not super, um, well, I guess what I'll mention about it is that the greater curvature of the stomach is the dorsal side of the stomach. And so that's where the dorsal mesentery attaches. The lesser curvature is the um, ventral side. And the stomach is kind of twisted a little bit during development. So it's kind of laying sideways in there. Okay. Um, again, I think you can figure out the other regions of the stomach on your own. Forceps. Okay. Um, did either of you guys get into your pericardial cavity? Yes, a little bit. 
So here's the heart that sits in the pericardial cavity, and that's basically right here um, underneath the coracoarticular muscles. So you cut through there, look underneath them, there it sits. And um, it's a heart, it's in the pericardial cavity. The wall of this cavity is lined by osteous membrane or serosa, and that would be the parietal pericardium. pericardium. And then if you touch the actual heart itself, that smooth membrane covering the heart would be the, if we've got a parietal pericardium, we probably have covering the heart a visceral, visceral pericardium. pericardium. Okay, so when you touch the outside of the heart, it's not actually the heart you're touching, it's the visceral pericardium. Okay. And beyond that, we didn't really go this time. Um, next time when we do the circulatory system, we'll get in there and actually look at the parts of the heart and the blood vessels and whatnot. And then finally we get to oral cavity, the pharynx, and this one is not open, but this one is. So we'll come back here. And we can just kind of open up the whole oral cavity and pharynx. And, <coughs> and this is really kind of a beautiful view inside the mouth of a shark, which is something you hope you never see um, <laughs> more personally, but there you go. Um, and the oral cavity and pharynx are actually distinguished based on um, the origin of the um, epithelium, the oral cavity is ectoderm, and the pharynx is the endoderm. You can't really tell in the adult, but the spiracle is definitely in the pharyngeal region, so the boundary is a little bit in front of the spiracle. Okay. And so that would be oral cavity. This is pharynx back here. And um, you can see the so-called primary tongue on the floor of the pharynx, that's this structure here. And it's primary tongue because it's not fleshy like our tongue is. It's, it's hard if you feel it. And what you're feeling in there are all the bases. Am I running out of time? Or no. no. Okay. All right. That's all right. I just want to make sure. So I won't hurry. Um, you're feeling all the basal elements, the branchial arches, so the basohyal, basobranchials, all of those guys lying in there are this primary tongue. It's just the floor of the pharynx but it's kind of tongue-like looking, sure. And that's in all fishes, you'll see that. Um, the spiracle, you kind of know. Um, internal gill slits, kind of obvious. Um, gill rakers, everyone saw. Um, people like gill rakers because they're really obvious. Um, and if I can stick a pin in them, which I can, you will definitely be happy, right, to call those gill rakers. Functionally, what are the gill rakers doing? Keeping food in, exactly. When the shark swallows a fish, if that fish were to swim out through the gill slit, that would be bad. So these are like a fence to keep their food in the, in the pharynx. Um, there's um, a branchial pouch, and the branchial pouch is the space that the gill slit opens into. So I can put a, a forceps in through the internal gill slit into a space that is the branchial pouch. That's where the gills are, and we've cut not we, but um, these folks. And whose shark is this again? I'm sorry, I'm losing track. Laura and uh, Natalie, Natalie um, have cut their, their pharynx open. And we're looking in here. And so this space in here is the branchial pouch. And you can see the gills sitting in there lining the branchial pouch. Um, the, um, the area where the gills are is technically the branchial pouch, and the area just lateral to where the gills are, where there's no actual gill filaments, is called, anyone? Remember? The parabranchial chamber. Okay. So to the side of the gills. Okay. So that's parabranchial chamber. Um, and they have external gill slits. I guess everyone's already seen those on the outside. Um, the interbranchial septum is just a general term for this whole flap that lies between one gill pouch or branchial pouch and the next. So when I grab it with the forceps like that, that's the interbranchial septum. And it supports the gills, and running through that would be um, the gill rays. If you think back to the skeleton, there's the branchial arch, and there's these little cartilages that extend out that interbranchial septum, those are the gill rays. Um, 
and at the edge of it, the lateral side, is that um, ectobranchial cartilage that you may have seen in the section. Okay. Um, flap valve. The flap valve is just the valve that closes the um, the uh, gill slit, and so it doesn't look too exciting, but it's important for the shark because we'll talk about this. But they have the ability to um, close the gill slits when they open their mouth and expand their pharynx so they can pull water into the mouth. Okay, very important. Um, gill lamellae. So when you look at the gill, you see the best one. This is probably a good one. Nice and red, too. You see lots of little folds, and those are what? Gills. Those are the gill lamellae. Technically, these are the so-called primary gill lamellae, the main folds. And if you were to take one of these out and put it under a dissecting scope and look at it really carefully, you would see each one of those primary folds or flaps, primary gill lamellae, has little cross ridges on it. And those are the secondary gill lamellae. Functionally, what are those doing? More surface area, exactly. And there's a very cool thing that goes on called countercurrent exchange that you probably heard about, where the blood flows in one direction, the water flows in the opposite direction, and this allows sharks and other fishes to do the same thing, to extract the most oxygen as possible from the water. Okay. Um, holobranch and hemibranchs are just some terms that are tossed around, good to know, but a holobranch is when you've got a gill septum in a branchial septum with gills on both sides of it and so that whole thing is called a holobranch because 